Good afternoon, YouTube world, and to those that have been following the videos uh, from the Christian debate that I did with uh, the, uh, Evangelist uh, Lapiana from Virginia. You can watch those videos. And now I'm working on a series uh, called uh, Fabricated Faith, which you'll start seeing that uh, from the book of Matthew, uh, from the Bible itself, that there's a lot of fabrications of supposed uh, fulfillments of uh, Messianic prophecies. And I've been shown with the book itself that... Uh, when you go back and read it and you really search it out, you'll see that they are all made up fulfillments. And so far um, in video one, if you've seen it, the virgin birth, according to Matthew chapter one, verse 21 through 23, it says it's a fulfillment of Isaiah 714, meaning when uh, there should be a sign a child was born of a virgin. Uh, uh, we have been taught to believe um, that that was referring to Jesus. But when you read the context, you'll see it doesn't refer to Jesus. So that's the number one. And then um, the story about after he's born, how he was taken to Egypt. And it said it was supposed to be a fulfillment of what the prophet said about his son shall be called out of Egypt. When you go back and check Hosea chapter 11, verse 1, where the prophet supposedly was saying that, it was you'll see that it was never referring to Jesus, but it was referring to Israel. And you'll see how it chopped off half the verse so it could try to make it fit. And what's going on is Christianity has tried to make up its own doctrines and make it fit with the Bible. But when you show what the Bible says itself clearly and plainly, people begin to, supposedly, especially Christians, begin to try to make things up. But they'll accuse the people who speak truth of them making it up or trying to make things fit or twist. But when you just read the Bible for itself, people, you can see that Christianity is, is first of all, don't even match up with the Bible. But second of all, even the Bible itself has errors, contradictions, and inconsistencies. I want to make it clear that I'm not here to change your beliefs about anything. I'm not here to change your belief about the virgin birth. What I am showing is if your belief about the virgin birth is because of Matthew who said go back and look at Isaiah 714, then obviously it would be a fabrication and you need to search out. If you believe in a virgin birth because you choose to believe in a virgin birth, period, it doesn't need the Bible to, to do that, that's your prerogative. If you choose to believe in things even though the Bible is saying something different, that's your prerogative. I'm not here to say that. What I am here to say is that the Bible is fallible. And so now I have been doing a search to see if some of the doctrines that we're told to believe, was they, was they even from the Bible or are they fabrications or whatever? So these sections are dealing with fabrications. I'm going to give three and four all in this video. Uh, we're back picking up at Matthew chapter 2. Uh, first of all, I showed you the virgin birth doesn't match up in Matthew chapter 1 verse 22 and 23 doesn't match up. And then I showed you in Matthew chapter 2 verse 13 through 15 about the so-called fulfillment of him being called out of Egypt. That's a fabricated story, period. That never happened. So let's pick up Matthew chapter 2 verse 16, 17, and 18. And I'm going to show you uh, um, number 3 of the um, uh, uh, fabricated faith. So you pick up Matthew 2 and 3. Or sorry, Matthew chapter 2, verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked that a wise man was exceedingly wroth, he sent forth and, sh and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Verse 17, here it is. Then was fulfilled. Once again, Matthew trying to make a fulfillment. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah. So you have to go back to Jeremiah and see it. Um, the prophet saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. So notice verse 17, Matthew 2, 17 says that the, uh, uh, the kids being slaughtered and, and, and the weeping is a fulfillment of what Jeremiah was talking about. But if you go back to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15, you'll find out that had nothing to do with a Messiah going to Egypt and kids being murdered and all that other stuff. And there's no history to back that up or anything. It was not a fulfillment because back in Jeremiah 31, 15, it was uh, 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 Rachel's bitter weeping was caused by the exile and captivity of the children. She refused to be comforted in her sorrow and her loss. She's the mother of the northern tribes of Benjamin and Joseph, whose sons were Ephraim and Manasseh. So in Jeremiah, when it was talking about Rachel weeping, it had nothing to do with a prophecy about Jesus Christ. It had nothing to do with it. These are all fabrications, people. Go back and read the context of, of the prophets when they're speaking. It has nothing. And you're going to have people trying to say it's uh, dual fulfillments and all these theological words. And I'm telling you, I used to say some of these things. This is what I'm saying. And honestly, we cannot do this. So that's number three, fabricated faith about Jesus. Notice these surround Jesus. These ain't commas and periods and misspellings. These are dealing with supposed fulfillments of prophecies appointing to a Messiah. So these are, if you see that these are fabrications and made up, then you need to start questioning things. And I'll put number four on here also, since it's in the same chapter, and it's just weird that it's 
the book of Matthew. You can see him so clearly. When you get to um, Matthew uh, 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 chapter 2 and verse 23, look what it says. This is after supposedly Jesus came back and uh, then he was warned and they had to go to Nazareth. So look, verse 23, Matthew 2, 23, look at it, it says, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, referring to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, that it might be fulfilled once again. It's supposedly saying that these things are happening so it can be fulfilled, meaning somebody spoke of it hundreds of years before, and since now it's happening, it's a fulfillment. That's what that means. So, verse 23, Matthew 2, 23 says, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Well, here's the problem with that, people. Go back in the Old Testament, and you will see that there's no prophet ever saying anything about Nazarene or Nazareth. There's no, there's no scripture saying anything about the Messiah being a Nazarene. And so, according to the book of Matthew, it says it's a fulfillment. So that means somebody was supposed to have said that. You won't find that in your book. So that's another fabrication. In other words, it's a made up thing. And one of our beliefs was that Messiah, that Jesus Christ uh, uh, fulfilled so many messianic prophecies. And now I just showed you in these, in, these, in these three videos, I showed you four things just from the book of Matthew alone that shows they were made up messianic prophecy so if they had nothing to do with the messiah why is christianity saying that they did to make us believe in the messiah do you see what i'm saying people you can choose to believe whatever you want to believe this is about the bible and i used to believe that it was infallible now that i came to this knowledge and understanding then i see that it's not i'm starting to see everything now and i thank god that the holy spirit allowed me to see this but the question is christians how come you deny what's so plain in the Bible? Why deny it? I would hope that if you say that you're following God, you would be an honest person. Do you people honestly deny what I'm just rereading in the scriptures? Do you deny that Matthew has made up fabrications, that these are errors and inconsistencies, but fabrications? Come on, y'all. Because if they're fabricated and you believe them, that means your faith is fabricated. Your faith has nothing to has no foundation. I'll continue on a series showing inconsistencies, um, errors, and all that for all you people out there who only believe there's only um, misspelling errors and comma errors. First, you'll say that there's, it's infallible, period. But once you start showing errors, you'll say these have nothing to do with it. You'll start seeing my videos on a second coming. You'll start seeing all these things, and it'll be from the Bible. Hopefully, you will be honest with yourself. God wants you to think. It doesn't matter what you believe, it's what you know. And if you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Get out of religion, please, and get a relationship. God bless you.